Oh, ho! there you are. What a pleasure. Well, look at me, trapped like a mouse, but don't lose any sleep over me. I'm very focused sitting here, so very still. Something good is bound to happen soon. <laughs> hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and in this video we're going to cover several characters from the land of Katarina in Dark Souls. The Onion Knights, Siegmai, Sieglind, and to a lesser extent, Siegvert. If you were hoping for a video about the other Onion Knight, Sir Davos, sorry to disappoint. But that out of the way, let's get started. And of course we'll start with their names. Sieg is German for victory, and there are many famous characters sporting the name and its variants, from Sigurd to Siegfried, Sigurd being a central character in the Volsung saga. How about the second half of his name, Maya? Another German name which could possibly stem from the meaning Mehr, as in the Mehr of this settlement. It is also similar to the Hebrew M-E-I-R, which I'm unsure as to the pronunciation of, but that means one who shines. All we can take away from this is that the Sieg part is perhaps the most important. A noble name for a knight. How about Sieglind and Siegfert, however? For little Lin, the most interesting connection I could find is that the name Lind had meanings associated with shields and spears, which were constructed from the hardwood of lime trees. As Lind literally translates to Lime. A good Valkyrie-esque name then. And Siegwert? The German W-A-R-T, is that Wert or Wart? I'm not sure. Either way, it means protector or defender, which seems like our best bet here. But the English ward comes from a watchman or guardsman, but victorious protector is a good meaning for Siegwert, isn't it? Now that we've covered their names, let us briefly touch on their homeland, the name Caterina is an Italian or Portuguese variant of Catherine, meaning pure, and there are many real places in Central America in particular named Caterina, but we really don't know too much about the land. Emit Force is a miracle foreign to the Way of White, which as Siegmeier is in possession of, meaning it's possible the Way of White do not have a strong presence in Caterina. But then it's also possible Siegmeier picked up the miracle along the way, somewhere in his journey. All we can say for certain is that Katarina Knights are proud for their distinctive onion armour, and ridiculed for it, and that Katarina itself is a land of festivity, drinks, and jovial features. Siegmeier, meanwhile, is first encountered far away from Katarina, mulling his situation over outside of Sen's fortress, having run into the gate, and not sure how to proceed. And this sets the tone for his character arc, Every time we encounter Siegmeier, he has run up against some sort of problem, and it's usually up to us to help him out. At Sen's fortress, we open the gate for him and stop the boulders. We deal with the Silver Knights in Anorlondo, and we give him curatives for the poison in Blighttown. One of our final encounters with Siegmeier is in Lost Isoleth, wherein he decides that this time, he will be the one to save us and bravely, recklessly, tries to defeat the Chaos Eaters in that dark pit. Only once does he ever outright ask for our assistance, but we know the Onion Knights of Katarina are proud, and surely it must grate on his sense of honour to be rescued by the Chosen Undead again and again, emasculated in a way. Listen to these lines of dialogue, and it seems plain to me that Siegmeier considers, or wishes himself to be, an equal with the Chosen Undead, a fellow adventurer. Let me guess, were you repelled by the Silver Knights? Oh, don't be ashamed. Tis the fate of vanguards like you and I. I'll think of something. We can overcome this together. Wait, you defeated those monsters? Fantastic! I'm saved! This Knight of Katarina hereby commends you. But be warned, gallantry entails great risks. Next time, give me a chance to come up with a plan. Um, by my knighthood, I'm ashamed to ask, but can you spare a few scraps of moss? You know, I really have run up quite a debt to you. Perhaps the time has come. I feel like I'm always thanking you. 
I curse my own inability. There are other lines, but I feel these ones are the crux of the matter. Zygmai is ashamed to need the assistance of others and wishes to prove himself. Could that be part of the reason he has come to Lordran? See, whereas Solaire tells us right away that he has come seeking his own son, whatever that means, and Oscar was following what he thought of as the fate of the undead, and Lord Trek was on his own mission, we never really know why Zygmai came to this land. The only hints to that we get are, there is nothing worthwhile up above, and adventuring is my life. That first is in regards to Anor Londo. After exploring, he deems it uninteresting and heads down instead. You could assume some ulterior motive and speculate that maybe he was in search of dragons or something else. But going purely by what we see from him in-game, I think the best bet is that Ziegmeier sought to prove himself. If you take it upon yourself to murder him, his last words will be, Heavens, my dear little Lin. And as it happens, little Lin has followed her father to Lordran, the land of the undead. But Zieglind herself is not undead, according to this line of cut dialogue. My daughter risked life and limb just to find me, to deliver her mother's last words. And the poor girl's not even undead. Heavens, I never asked her to do that. When we find Zieglind, we know that she's looking for her father and was unfortunate enough to have been caught by Seath the Scaleless. Or to be more precise, imprisoned in one of his golems, very much in the same way Duskavulasil was imprisoned. The fact that Zieglind is human makes it all the more impressive that she has made it this far, and it would appear she might be more accomplished than her poor father. At some point, she meets with Ziegmeier, after the Chosen Undead assists both of them, and delivers her mother's final words, which prompt Ziegmeier to head on his final adventure down to Ash Lake. And Ziegelind remarks not to worry. If he goes hollow, she will kill him again. Her language is a little odd here. Is she telling us that she has killed him before, or that he will simply die again, as he is undead and has probably died multiple times? Either way, she is capable of putting him down after he hollows, not to mention surviving in Lordran as a human. Quite the feat. Like her father, she is garbed in the onion armour, but wields a bastard sword, whereas he uses a true two-hander. She also appears to use a red tearstone ring, a very risky item, even for an undead, let alone a human. A human with one life? But one? She must be brave. The red tearstone ring from Kareem boosts the power of its wielder when they are in danger. And in gameplay mechanics, when you are below 20% health, you gain 50% more attack power. The Bastard Sword is an interesting one, in this sense. Bastard Sword is used to describe a sword that is halfway between a one-handed sword and a two-handed sword. An irregularity. But when used in reference to a person, as opposed to a hand and a half sword, Bastard instead means someone born to parents who were not married. In regards to that, Ziegmeier referred to Zieglin's mother as her mother and not my wife. Something to keep in mind. Is she a noble knight's byblo? The two seem fairly close all the same, and how dutiful a daughter to come all that way, a human, to see her father receives those final words, and even to lay him to rest. As for why he turned hollow, was it the culmination of all his small failures up to that point, driven home by the last words of Zieglin's mother, his debt to the chosen undead, weighing heavily upon his soul? But what about Ziegvert of Katerina? Whereas Ziegmeier was undead and Zieglind was human, Ziegvert is one of the other few unkindled we come across in Dark Souls 3. His story parallels Ziegmeier's in many ways. He is often found in a troubling situation, only to be rescued by the Ashen One. Unlike Ziegmeier, he has a clear goal, to find and put his old friend, Yorm the Giant, to rest. Somewhat more capable than his first incarnation, Ziegvert is able to escape the depths of a well simply by having his armour returned to him. Just how that makes sense, I am not sure. Yorm once held two Storm Ruler greatswords, giving one to the humans who doubted him, and another to a dear friend, who we can surmise is Siegfert. 
These storm rulers are powerful weapons capable of slaying even giants of Yorm's strength and size, meaning his act of giving them to others was to earn their trust, and in Zivert's case, a means to presumably put him down should he hollow or go rogue or otherwise be in need of rest. A task that seems to have brought Zigvert back as unkindled. For most of the Lords of Cinder have an unkindled who seeks their end. Anri of Astora sought to destroy Aldrich. Hawkwood was once a member of the Abyss Watchers. And Zigvert is Yorm's old, dear friend. If you're looking for more information and backstory for that giant lord, how fortunate for you I have a video all about him. As for the Onion Knights, despite their comical appearance and light-hearted ways, they aren't immune to the heavy atmosphere of Dark Souls. And of all the storylines, I do consider the tale of Ziegmeier and Lynn perhaps the most tragic of them all. Oh father, dear father. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha